figuring it out, like, you know, our, like, each other, like, you know, our strengths and the weakness. And we still, as this, like, a starting lineup, like, and we only play, like, maybe six games, you know? So, but this time, like, you know, these past three games, like, we kind of figured out, like, you know, what's our role and then, you know, um, those kind of stuff. So that's that kind of actually made me easy to, like, you know, um, the offense and then just play together. Speaking of that, what, uh, what are you learning about playing with Chris Um, He's, you know, he's a stretch big. Um, he's a great player, you know. Um, I haven't played in a guy like that, you know, of course, in my life. So first time I'm playing the guy like like him, and uh, it's it's actually, it's very good, you know. It's, uh, he, 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 he get like, he gets a lot of attention, you know. So um, there's like two, three guys on him and like, it makes it easier for us to, you know, get to our spots and then um, get like open shots. So, yeah, it's it's great. It's been great. What, what can you say about the way that Chris has hurt you? Oh, he's great. You know, he's since college. You know, he was uh, he was like that. He knows he knows that he's smart. He knows the basketball, and you know, of course, you know, um, he was a guy in a Gonzaga too. So. He knows, you know, and especially in this uh, NBA, you know, with, with us, like, you know, he knows the role, his role. Um, and, yeah, he's playing well. What did you learn about uh, Daniel Gafford off the board? What, what did you like as a teammate in college? Oh, yeah. You talked about DJ? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, me, and all, me and him always, like, you know, messing around, you know. It's funny. Um, he knows he loves uh, uh, anime and stuff. So uh, we always talk about like those kind of stuff. You know, he always asks me like, "What's this mean? What's that mean?" And, like I always like you know answer it. But I feel like he knows more than I know. So like you know, it's hard for me to answer sometimes. But yeah, um, it's been great. Yeah. You, uh, this off season, I mean, for everyone, I think you know, personally, full off season. Mm -hmm. while. Yeah. Um, what are you looking forward to about it? In terms of, like, <laughs> it's actually for me it's like the first time in my life I actually have like a whole season off you know like whole like summer off so for me I want to take my time and then uh, you know um I want to build my body you know I want to work on my body uh, I want to focus on my body um and then uh, get in a good shape um those kind of stuff and yeah that's that's the main goal for me You know, like, like I just said, like, you know, he gets a lot of attention, so he gets like two, three guys and then, but he's, uh, he's tall, so, you know, he can see, you know, he can pass, uh, pass the ball that like, you know, usually can't. So that's, a, that's the one thing I, and he always watch, like, you know, looking at the other, he's not only like looking at the, his defender, you know, he's looking at all like five defenders. So that's the, that's the key, I think. All right, we'll switch over to Zoom. Uh, Neil? Hey, Rui. I guess for you, just the last eight games of being in the starting lineup, has anything changed for you? Have you, you know, been motivated to be more aggressive or anything like that? I mean, uh, I started, like, you know, um, past two years. So, you know, like, it's nothing, like, for me to change it, you know. Uh, it was actually hard for me to, like, digest, you know, coming off from a bench, you know. Uh, it was different, like, you know, how to say it, like, I don't know, like, a different way to, like, you know, come out from, you know, come into the games and, you know, uh, get the rhythm. So, for for me, it's that starting, like, you know, right now it's maybe, like, six games and I'm starting, but, you know, it's 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 easy for me to, like, you know, get the, get in the rhythm, you know, and it just go there. Yeah. And then I don't think all of us got the chance to talk to you when the Cherry Blossom jerseys dropped. I guess initially, before you even saw them, like when was the first time that you heard that, oh, these were actually something that were coming in the future? And then what was your reaction to then finally seeing them, trying them on? Uh, I think it was like a month ago. 
I saw the first time and then it was pretty cool, you know. Uh, I didn't think they were going to do like all pink. So, you know, it was interesting. Um, more than that, I'm excited for like next year, like, you know, what the Jordan going to make shoes for me, you know. That's going to be the, you know, more like, you know, how, you know, how am I going to uh, wear with those jerseys, yeah. Uh, not as of uh, right now. Uh, I don't foresee him uh, being available tomorrow, uh, but uh, we'll see. Well, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's not anything creative or tricky. Um, he's just kind of reading the defense. And since we're playing through him a lot, uh, whether it's in the post or top of the floor, he's just making a simple play. Um, and I think it's just more of a collective mindset. We're, we're just trying to find the open guy. Um, keeping you know energy in that ball and the ball's moving, um, which is, in my opinion, why we've been efficient offensively. Sarah, speaking of efficient, efficiency, you've been a much better three point shooter since uh, since the All Star break. About a quarter of a season now, the sample size. What do you make of the sample size that you've been in, um, especially compared to what you saw earlier? In the well, I think it's, some of it is the ball movement, but also the um, you know the wall of averages. <laughs> we were so bad early. And, you know, a lot of the shots were very similar in nature. Um, we're not running anything dramatically different, you know, than early in the year. The, uh, you know, guys just didn't shoot it well. You could say it was the ball, it was this, it was that. There was a lot of questions, you know, league-wide. I think, you know, the, the scoring was down. Um, and I think it just took some time for guys to get going. But um, I think the, the ball movement has been probably the biggest difference, in my opinion. Uh, but... Yeah, I think the, the the types of shots have been very similar, uh, so uh, it, it's a good thing. But um, I don't think it's anything dramatic. Would, what would the sample size be where like maybe it changes the, the nature of the offseason? Could there be a sample size where it's like okay, maybe that's not our biggest thing? Maybe we're better than. Maybe. Oh, well, I think it, I think we we are better than we were early in the year. Uh, you got to think. Well, you know, Corey struggled at times. You know, where. Maybe it's the speed of the game for a rookie. Um, you know, Rui's sh shot, you know, he's, he's been shooting excellent, you know, since he's been back, and he missed the first 30-plus games. Um, you know, then he's shown an uptick in his three-point shooting. So some of it's just guys getting a rhythm, um, you know, a new rhythm with a new offense, new coach, new system, new, new teammates. All those things combined, wrapped in one, um, I think play a part in that. But just the, you know, they're playing with a higher level of confidence right now. What's unique for a young player? Um, you know, I think a lot of times it's guys don't know where to go or when to go. Um, and he does a terrific job of finding the next action, of cutting, moving, and spacing correctly. Um, you know, the timing of that, uh, the force at which he cuts. And it, there's gravity to that because he is a shooter and teams are going to guard him as such. Um, you know, just his off ball movement opens things up, not necessarily for just him. But the the play behind the play. Players like him that have to move to a lot without the ball. What adjustment have you noticed from young players? Uh, just kind of realizing what it takes to get open in the NBA. Uh, I think the the setups are critical. Um, you know the physicality of those setups, the timing. Um, but I think the other piece is you know um, you know the off ball movement is is one thing, but it, there has to be purpose behind it. You know, just to cut, to move, and sometimes you just wind up being in the way. I think it's a pretty good feel of reading and assessing the floor, um, having a, a good sense of timing of when it, when it's appropriate, given who else is out there. Think about this off season being, you know, the calendar a normal off season, and you know, particularly for young players like Danny Lafayette uh, hasn't really had one of those types of off seasons. Mm -hmm. yet. How important that do you feel today? Well, it, it's a big off season. Um, you know, it's because it. This will be different for, for a lot of guys, but um, taking full advantage of it. Obviously, you want guys to get a chance to recharge and rest, um, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally. But uh, it's also important not lose days, you know, to, to try to, you know, maintain conditioning, uh, but also, you know, have conversations, and we will, about, you know, what are the strengths, weaknesses, areas of concern, 
um, things we can kind of do now that will help, you know, as we get throughout the summer. We can't wait until June, July and think, all right, let's start working. Uh, I think it's an opportunity to get ahead of ourselves a bit um, and lay some things uh, that hopefully will, uh, you know, get these guys back uh, in a better position, you know, come fall. Well, to, to, yeah, yeah, to a, to a certain extent, but it's also, you know, we'll have continued conversations with the front office because uh, there are a lot of layers, you know, not only just this group, but, you know, the, you know, the draft, the free agency, all these things. So, um, you know, first and foremost is we got to concentrate on finishing the season. And obviously that's the most important thing for our guys to focus upon. Um, of course, it's, it's human nature to think about your offseason plans and this, that, and the other, but um, we still have some games to play. And I'd, I'd like to see us, you know, lock into that and, and try to make these as competitive as possible. You know, how do you carry over this, uh, this win against Boston? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different issue, different, you know, different team. Um, they've been one of the hottest teams in the league since January uh, on both sides of the ball. So uh, we're going to have our hands uh, full. You know, Tatum obviously is the, the main guy, but Brown, uh, Tatum combination. Um, they've got a lot of quality uh, players that, you know, around them. The physicality uh, that they bring on both sides of the ball, the switching defensively has given us issues. We've seen that. Um, so it's certainly a challenge, but I think there are some, some things we can carry over. Uh, some of the things we did with Luca, um, you know, just frustrating him, giving him different looks, um, trying to hit him, blitz him, get the ball out of his hands, those type of things will carry. Yeah, and we talked about that with the group is, um, of course, it, it was effective. It's not always going to be as clean and easy as, as it, you know, played out last night. But um, we saw what Tatum can do, you know, and we we're trying to minimize some of his uh, effectiveness. It's easier said than done. And um, if we can apply some of those things to him, to Trey Young, I mean, all these guys we've We've had issues with at times. Um, I think it's great, you know, and not only gives us a sample size, but also gives us an opportunity to clean some of these things up. What we like about it, um, how else we can enhance it, and uh, you know, you, you have it kind of in your back pocket, you know, for next season. Also, compared to an early January, how much has it become? How much more has it become comfortable? I think it's, it's night and day. Um, just his overall feel. Um, understanding what we're trying to do spatially. He's doing a much better job. And I think that's why we're seeing, you know, him find a three point line and, and shoot it with confidence. Um, I think he, he was shooting it well early, but he didn't necessarily feel that, that that was part of his game. And I think now he's kind of embraced it. Um, you don't have to hunt threes, you take the available shot, uh, but you're, you're shooting at such a high clip. If you're open and you know, the ball finds you in the confines, of what we're trying to do by all means, you know, it, it's a great play for us. Um, but, you know, his post-ups, his ISOs, he's, he's, he's playing downhill, he's playing aggressive. Uh, so I think he's finding a, a comfort level, not only with what we're trying to do, but the, the, the pairings that he's playing with. Not that it should matter, I guess, for a player, but, or at least for a player, does he look more comfortable? I think just as a player in general, he looks more comfortable. Um, you know, obviously, no Kyle, it's, it's a natural fit. He's been a starter with, you know, with this team. Uh, in the past, and I don't get caught up in who's starting, who's playing. It's like who's finishing, you know, who, who who's out there when it when it matters. I think that's the most important thing. Sometimes the game dictates that, but he's shown that he he can be responsible in those moments on both sides of the ball. So um, it's a good sign to see. And you know, obviously Corey and Denny, the, all three of these young guys have had great moments this season. Um, so to have the experience, to have to go through it, uh, live in those clutch moments, you know, and, and make plays. Um, I think it's important for their development, but we, we get a true sense of where they are compared to where they were. When it comes to uh, sharing the ball, uh, Thomas Sadrick said on several occasions that he noticed how you guys played from afar earlier this season. He talked about how much you're part of that life for those guys. Play. What's it like to hear that? Well, it's, it's a compliment. You know, I think it's, you know, of course, we're going to dictate uh, schematically with, you know, how we play with who we have. That's going to dictate a, a lot of it, but 
Um, that's something that we've preached since day one. And to see it, you know, kind of get a little bit more momentum, you know, right now. And the, and the fact that you are making shots, of course, assist numbers go up. Um, but the guys have bought into that and the, the unselfish nature of it. And it's not just the, you know, the assist. It's also the hockey assist. It's the screen assist. It's the cutting and giving yourself up for your teammate. That, that whole mentality. Do something for someone else. Um, I think guys like to play that way. All right, Coach, we'll switch over to Zoom. Neil? Hey, Coach, even if he's unable to go, do you expect Kuz to travel with you guys? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, I've had conversations in, uh, as of this morning, but I think he'll, he'll be available to travel. And so I know I've asked you similarly about Brad, but, you know, Kuz just being on the bench, you know, I know you're probably, you know, worried about coaching your little huddles and drawing up plays and stuff, but have you observed anything of where, okay, you're like, well, that's something where, you know, he's bringing something to us, even though he's not necessarily playing. Well, that's a piece, that's a piece of it. You know, I think to have those guys there, their presence, their voice, um, you know, it matters to not only the coaching staff, but their teammates. They're, they're still part of it. They're, they're encouraging their guys uh, to keep going. Um, so it's just, you know, constant messaging. Um, and a lot of times, you know, throughout the season, their teammates are the ones cheering for them. So it, it does go a long way. And you touched on, you know, just keeping guys motivated these final five games to, you know, continue building those right habits and things like that. I guess you as a coach and your staff, how do you guys try and, you know, remind them, keep them on course and not let, you know, human, human nature take over? Well, I mean, we still have a job to do. I mean, it's, it doesn't matter if it's game one or game 82, you, your approach can't waver. Um, you know, we have to be smart with how we work uh, this late in the year. It's uh, be mindful of guys in their bodies, the, the compression of games, all those things, you know, come into play, but it doesn't necessarily change our approach or how we prepare. 